Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. Today we're going to talk about an SE Hunglis and an SE Azula 2. These are both my knives, but my customer Troy has the same two blades and his also have the TKC or the knife connection scales attached to them. The knife connection or TKC makes these beautiful G10 scales and uh, I absolutely believe that they are superior to the micarta slabs that come stock with most SE knives. SE's starting to do some 3D contoured G10 scales on some of their blades and I really do like those as well. But for me, for my taste, the TKC option is the winner of that race. So that said, handle scales on the table here as far as discussion goes, I wanted to go ahead and make a preliminary announcement that I also am starting to design and manufacture handle scales. I've been getting a lot of questions about it for a bunch of knives over the years, particularly the K-Bar TDI series. And I wanted to let you guys know in case you're interested that within the next month or two, I plan on having those available on my website for purchase. If you happen to want scales made for a knife that's not listed there or in a material that's not listed or anything like that, you can reach out to me and we can talk details. Worst that'll happen is I'll tell you, I'm sorry, I can't do that right now. Um, but the chances are pretty good that I would be up for taking on the task. The one real limitation I'm going to go ahead and throw out there is they need to be removable scales. I don't want to mess around with trying to knock pins out and re people's knives or having to refinish them. Uh, like most pins, you put epoxy through to get the scales and the pins held in place. And then you do finish work to it over the top by, you know, sanding all the all the different work that's involved there that's not the game i'm in i'm in the game of making scales that all i have to do is remove the previous scales make my new scales and mount them on so that is one limitation at least for now that i'm kind of going to put out there so if you do have like a bark river as much as i love bark river and as much as i want to you know take a crack at designing my own scales for a few of their models it's just not going to happen right now so if you have a knife with removable scales and you're interested in some custom handle scales, micarta, G10, even Kydex, I can probably help you out. So let me really quickly show you a couple scale sets that I just recently made to give you an idea. So here we have, this is the factory scale set for the K-Bar TDI Hellfire, or sorry, this is the Hindrance, the Hinderer Hindrance. And they use the same scales as the Hellfire. So what I did was I modeled up the exact scales that you're looking at here, or at least a close approximation to them, and I milled it out of Coyote G10. This is not wood, it's actually G10. You can kind of see if you look real close to it, you can tell. Now the real reason, why would I model up the same exact scale shape? The reason is because a lot of people don't like the feel and how slippery the, the injection molded plastic is. For my taste, I also don't like the weight of it. The micarta or the g10 is a little bit heavier so i like the weight and i like the texture and that really came through for me on this on this scale project so i can do these in all kinds of different colors or material options but this is just what we're looking at for this particular set it was a, a prototype essentially but it came out good enough that i would be willing to offer um, scales for these knives right away the next thing is kydex i actually make things like kydex knuckles and whatnot by fusing layers of kydex with heat and pressure and then machining them and these scales for the tdi pocket strike are no exception so i really like this i kind of redesigned the scales the factory scales look like this i really don't like them they don't go to the edge of the tang they're very flat um, you can see the difference in height on them Maybe it's not super pronounced here, but my scales are something like a 16th thicker at their thickest point, and it really makes the knife fill out the hand a little better. So anyway, these are my design, but I used obviously kind of quintessential elements of the TDI uh, handle series to model these up and fit to this blade, but I will be offering these as well. And man, those Kydex scales feel really, really nice. They also look a lot prettier than I expected Kydex to when you run the machine over it. But yeah, let me know what you think of these in the comments down below. So anyway, let's get on with the SE build that I've been talking about here in this video. This is just a preliminary announcement about scales that I'll be offering. 
So Troy asked me to stick with an OD green and black theme. So what I decided to do was build both sheets as full double layer sheets to make them super robust. And uh, I think they just look so cool. You've got black as your bottom layer, OD green as your upper layer. And having that double layer makes them really more rigid, more durable. They're gonna last longer. Not that Kydex doesn't last long to begin with, but man, it's just a whole other level. I really love double layer sheets. Now what this is, what it does, it does make the sheath a little more rigid so your retention may feel a little bit stronger. The retention on these guys is really, really strong, but even though there's no rattle, no play, and it feels like a lot of retention, if you were just to grab the handle and do a grip it and rip it style draw, it does feel difficult to draw out. What I recommend is you grab the handle with your back three fingers, you let your index finger rest in that finger groove, and you use a little bit of arm strength to pull, as well as use your thumb to push on that thumb brake. And it, I promise you, it's a really smooth, easy draw. Very controlled, very comfortable. And man, it feels nice. As for accessories on here, we are looking at a half inch ferro rod. Now, what you're gonna do is whittle your rod down so it's gonna get loose. So I'm gonna provide a one foot length of shock cord. And Troy, what you wanna do is get your lanyard hole about flush with the edge of the, the ferro rod sleeve, tie a single overhand knot about halfway to two thirds of the way down the length of the holder, and then you'll have to stretch that knot out around the tip of your rod. And what it's gonna do is create inward pressure from both angles, holding your rod snug in there. Even after it's whittled down, it's gonna be nice and snug, and it shouldn't have very much rattle even when the tip is super small on the uh, ferro rod. Down here we have an SE tin. This is a great tin option. Altoids tins and SE tins are my go-to. Uh, there are plenty of other options out there, including plenty of like Chinese unbranded. Um, but I would recommend carrying a tin on a sheath to most people that are gonna be doing a lot of bushcraft stuff. It just has no limit to like what kinds of things, well, I guess there are limits obviously based on the size, but there's just tons of options for what you can pack in. There's a lot of good videos on putting together a survival tin. There was like a big survival tin challenge a few years ago that people were doing. And I think it's awesome. You can pack mylar blankets, you can pack tinder, you can pack fishing kits, things like that. It's just great, great way to get some extra gear on your setup. Now we have a few carry setups in tow here. First and foremost, we see the molly locks. These are on a floated plate. Floated just means that the plate is lifted up off the surface of the main sheath a little bit. I put those spacers there. It just allows you to really compress things down and it holds it nice and tight. I also floated it so that I could get the ferro rod loop snuck in between the plate and the sheath. And that just allows for a little bit more of a condensed and uh, convenient location for the rod. Yes, you could have the rod, you know, way down here toward the tip. You could have it on the bottom as well. You could even have it on the face of this sheath, but the reason I chose not to place it on the face of the sheath is because it would interrupt the movement of the tech lock in and out of the tech lock adapter. So I'll get to this part in a little bit. This is my favorite part of the build. All right, so we got molly locks on there. Now you can take the mollies off. You just open them up and remove those two screws, the same on both of them. What I would do if you remove those is I would put the hardware back into the sockets that they're in from below. You can't see them because the molly locks are there, but yeah, I would just take these off and then plug them right back in so you don't lose them. And then you also have the option of mounting a tech lock on instead. So if you, as I throw everything off my bench. So if you want to mount the tech lock, I would do it right here through those two screws. You can go horizontal, you can go vertical, or you can even find some canted options in between them like like so. It's a little bit of a stretch there, but you can make that work. And likewise, you can make it work at that angle. So you have roughly four different angles that you can choose from uh, with your tech lock. So I really like setting up the spacing like that. Now, as far as spacing goes, these are also spaced at the appropriate one and a half inch interval to make it work with Molly webbing panels. All right. So the dangler up here is fixed directly to the same plate as the molly but when you use your tech lock you may choose that you want your tech lock snugged up against the plate more low profile and therefore you would want to get rid of the dangler you can see that the hardware sticks up past those uh, recesses those molded sections of the plate a little bit so about an eighth of an inch higher so you might want to take those off if you decide to take those off 
I still wanted a dangler option to be available to Troy. So what I did was I threw this in for free. This is a clasp dangler. And what it is, is just a piece that plugs into your tech lock like so, and offers you an immediate alternative to how you're carrying your dangler. So you can switch between a tech lock and a dangler carry by just plugging that one tab in. It's super easy. If you're going to be doing that, swapping and removing this, you're also going to need to swap the dangler piece over to this D-ring. So the dangler loop, I should say. So you'll lift up. These are pull the dot snaps. So you have to lift from the tip to open. It means pressure from inside the loop doesn't pop them open. And then you just remove those two Phillips head screws and re-thread it on in the same way onto this dangler loop. Very easy, very simple. Only takes a couple minutes to swap those out. Pull the dot snaps likewise need to be rolled toward the tip to close them. So just make sure you've got good closure. If it's partially closed, they can still pop open, but you'll feel it when it's nice and flat, you know it's closed. Usually you'll hear them snap shut as well. We also have a leg strap down here. Now when you add a leg strap to a dangler, it's called a drop leg rig. When you're gonna carry a large or a heavy knife on your belt, I recommend a drop leg. And the reason is because it keeps the whole sheath in line with your thigh. And that means basically that as you walk, you're not gonna have the sheath swinging on its own. It's gonna move with your body and you'll feel that as a lot more comfortable than you know, swinging your leg forward and feeling your sheath pull backward. You can feel that little tug on your hips and it's not like it's like painful or, or difficult or anything like that, but it adds up over time. And it, to me, it's just more annoying than anything. So I like bolting things down and having them nice and tight to my leg. We also have one other carry set up and uh, it is my second favorite way to carry large blades. My first favorite is a Baldrick system, which is a two point rifle sling essentially second favorite way is a chest harness now the new chest harness that i've been offering for the past i want to say about six months now is called the universal four point chest harness it is the system that i'm going with now i've swapped away from doing three point harnesses because you get more or uh, sorry you get less pressure against your body per strap with four point which i like but more importantly it also allows you to carry this plate level and set the tension on it just one time and then from there you can just mount your your uh, your sheath, your holster, whatever it is to the plate at virtually any angle. So it's very, very versatile and it's a lot more comfortable than the previous setup. The other advantage is you just adjust the webbing one time so that the plate is where you want it and then you mount to the plate versus a three-point harness attached directly to the sheath where if you needed to adjust anything about the angle, the ride height, the side, you would need to reattach the webbing. You would need to then adjust the webbing in you know, for each one to make sure it stays at the position it's meant to carry at. And oftentimes, even when it's in that position, when you start to move around, it wants to shift, it wants to flex, it wants to droop, whatever it is. This is just the solution to all those problems at the same time. I also decided to go with black and OD just because I thought that looked super cool with the sheath. I like that color combo so much. So anyway, there we go. Now, the last thing I want to show you, my favorite part of the build is the Izula 2 riding on a tech lock. And this apparatus here, which is a universal tech lock adapter, UTA is the abbreviation. Um, this is something I invented several years ago when a customer asked me, hey, can is there any way to make it so that the small sheath has a carry setup attached as well? Now, this was the first time in the Kydex world, I believe, that it was ever done. Um, so I call myself the inventor of the breakaway piggyback. I know there are a couple other guys that are doing it now, uh, but I didn't see anybody doing it until about a year after I was doing it. So I think I invented this concept or rather a customer invented it. And I just built the first one. Uh, I like to think of it more like that. So depending on the carry setup, what a breakaway piggyback is basically set up to do is allow you to have a, a carry setup on both knives and plug the small one into the large one and remove it as needed. So you can immediately carry them separately or together, carry them uh, independent of one another. And there's just a lot of really good applications to that. In this case, when you choose a tech lock, I go to the tech lock adapter. The reason I do is because it's just the strongest way to do this. It's a good pouch that the tech lock just slides into and you can actually adjust the retention on it by way of a mag retention device hidden in there. That silver set screw there takes a 1 8 inch hex bit or Allen key. So I would use like one of the 90 degree bent Allen keys in the short end and you can just tighten it or loosen it right from there. So you don't have to remove the uh, SE tin holder to get at it. Very easy to do and um, 
it just manufactures retention by creating compression and pressure inward. So you can add or reduce the amount of resistance on the draw. So there you go, guys. That is the setup. I'm super happy with this. I think it's really nice looking. It's definitely robust and strong. Pretty low profile for all the gear that you've got on it. And uh, for those haters out there who want to say that this is too bulky, look at the SE10 on there. This is sticking out basically no further than the SE10. It's in line with that. So uh, I don't think that's a really valid objection. And uh, even if you do still think that it's too bulky or whatever, well, good news is you don't have to buy this setup. This is specifically built for one individual who ordered this particular configuration. So that's my objection to your objection. Well, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Personally, I would carry this. I think this is a great setup. I think it's slim enough and I'm not going out to do like tactical military operations when I'm carrying this. I'm going to go out in the field and do bushcrafting. And when I want to, I can drop this one and go out ranging with the big one, or I can drop the big one, immediately mount this to my belt and do a little foraging or bushcrafting, whatever it is. Um, it's just there for the user, the end user, the specific individual who ordered it to do with it as they see fit. So uh, I think Troy chose wisely and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts down below. I'd also love to know your thoughts on SE knives, on all of the gear you see here, and especially on what you think of me offering handle scales here in the near future. I grabbed the wrong one. Here we go. So yeah, I'm going to be designing more and more scales and I'll be machining them myself. I have a CNC right here in my shop and uh, this I think is going to become a, a little bit of a side hustle within the Kydex uh, business that I run and hopefully it'll become big over time. But right now I'm just looking to kind of break the uh, ice and get into it so let me know if you guys are interested and in what knives you want to see scales for whether it's a replica of the factory scales but min, uh, milled from a different material or an all new design for a given set of scales and if enough people are saying they want something for a certain model you can bet your britches i will be going out there and making it happen so all right guys thanks so much for your support thanks so much for the comments the views the likes and the subscribes i hope you all hit that subscribe and like button and of course i appreciate you tuning in stick around for the next one god bless